Hello and welcome once again to the show that fuels your appetite for adrenaline and alternative sports. Coming up this week, we report on a new initiative hoping to improve the future of downhill skiing. Then we take you back to Peru for our second report from the latest stage of the ISSF World Cup in Shotgun. All that to come, but first we preview an exciting new season from the Swatch Freeride World Tour. Winter is in the air and an elite group of the world's best skiers and snowboarders are readying themselves once again to compete on the Freeride World Tour. This unique tour will see top athletes travel between events in Canada, Europe and North America to compete against each other on natural, ungroomed terrain where they'll battle for the title of Freeride World Champion in skiing and snowboarding. This sport is all about competing in a natural environment and the athletes use specially designed equipment to ride here. Safety is paramount and all the riders are experienced in backcountry travel and avalanche safety. Unlike other sports, there's no practice run or heats in these events. The athletes ride the face based only on a visual inspection, often using binoculars. The best athletes are able to commit their line to memory and play it back when they're literally in the start gate. A panel of expert judges will score each athlete on their run, marking them on a series of criteria and an overall impression of the run. The winning rider will take a line that's original and well thought out, using the steepest parts of the mountain. The run should be fluid, the rider following the line without hesitation or getting lost. Jumps also count, with the judges looking at the point from where the riders started their jump, how big it was and whether they stuck their landing or not. Plus, of course, that elusive element of style. But riding on such a steep terrain requires control and safety. The judges like to see the rider dominating the face, making turns and not side-slipping out of control. Progression is key to the sport and the riders have to find a balance between pushing their limits and not crashing. With a newly unified tour and a huge base of athletes competing in both the juniors and the qualifier series, the competition is hotter than ever for the honour of competing on the Freeride World Tour. The first stop of 2013 took place in Revelstoke Mountain Resort, well known for its snowfall and huge vertical drop. The contest face, known as Mac Daddy, is steep and intimidating with over 700 metres of vertical drop. After a week of non-stop snow, it finally broke blue and the mighty Mac Daddy emerged through the clouds to welcome the riders. French freestyler Margot Rosy started the season as a strong favourite to win. Lucking out with a gap in the weather, she took a confident line down the left side of the face. However, it wasn't going to be her day and Shannon Yates took first with a steep technical line that she rode with a high degree of fluidity and control. In the men's snowboarding, Aurelien Rutan of Le Grand France took the technical rider's right side of the course. Staying on his feet despite the slough, Rutan found his fast cliff drop to secure a solid run and third place. The previous year's world champ, Jonathan Charlet, also chose to go rider's right, carefully managing the cascades of loose slough. Dropping into a high-speed cliff line, Charlie lost control of his landing, crashing out in style. With the two Frenchmen down, Ralph Backstrom stepped up to the challenge. Using his intimate knowledge of the venue, Backstrom headed far riders left before dropping a stair-steppy triple cliff drop. A high score of 89 points left Backstrom way ahead of the competition to take first place. So coming into this comp in our last season, Came pretty close to getting the title, and uh, yeah, just you know, a butt check or two shy of the title. So um, coming up here, really, really wanted to get a good, good result, and um, 
was pretty pleased with how that came out. In changing light to a rookie, Nadine Valno of Austria rode fluidly down the middle of the face. She hit numerous features on the way down, impressing the judges with her line choice and confident technique to take second place. But it was 2012 champ Christine Hagen skiing the venue for her first time who took first place, winning with a fluid technical line and a series of well-stomped jumps. Julian Lopez of France, a skier with plenty of experience on his face, headed skiers left, cleanly linking together a series of pillow drops and cliffs to take third place. Last year's overall champion, Rennie Barkrid of Sweden, chose to go fast and steep from the outset, but crashed badly on his landing. After a year out, Jeremy Heights of Switzerland was back on form, taking the fall line for a near flawless high speed double cliff drop, earning himself second place. The flying Hawaiian Drew Tabka drew on his contest experience on the Mag Daddy, making use of the abundant terrain features lower down and hitting cliff after cliff with his smooth style. I felt like I had a winning line and I knew if I did it right, it would turn out well, and I landed it. My plan this year is to be a little more aggressive, actually. You know, I had a lot of like fifth place finishes last year, and uh, that doesn't pay as much and it doesn't win a world title. You have to be in the top three more often. So more aggressive, maybe take some more risks, but uh, looks like it paid off right away. It was men only for the second tour stop in a snowy Kermio, Italy. The area eventually lived up to its reputation as the sunny side of Mont Blanc, with the clouds parting to reveal the magnificent Italian Alps and a powder-laden contest face. Fresh from his win in Revelstoke, squaw local Ralph Backstrom came to Kermio as points favourite. He dropped a smooth double cliff drop, a solid enough big mountain run, but not quite enough for a podium on a face which favoured the freestylers. After a disastrous start in Revelstoke, still no redemption for Jonathan Charley. He picked out a couple of good jumps, but it was only enough for a disappointing ninth place. John Radoski of Jackson Hole, USA, stamped it up a notch in Kermier, hitting in numerous features and following a styly method air with a big backflip to take second place. Frenchman Aurelien Rotan was on top form in Kermier, building on his third place in Revelstoke. Taking a high line into the freshies, Rotan linked a series of smooth, well-executed jumps. That meant Rotan's first ever tour win, and it sent him to the top of the overall rankings. After his epic tumble in Revelstoke, Rennie Barkred was keen to make up lost ground. Taking a fluid line down the main culwad, Barkred hit a series of four line features, stomping his landings to take third place. Jeremy Heights of Switzerland built on his second place run in Revelstoke with another formidable second place run here. Charging out of the start gate, he skied right on his limit, putting together a creative display of jumps and turns in the steep technical terrain. After a brilliant first stage win in Revelstoke, Drew Tamka got stuck, throwing a big backflip off a burn, followed by a smooth 360, but unfortunately it was only good enough for sixth place. Making history as the first Italian skier on the tour, Marcus Ada headed skiers right, dropping fast into a steep, exposed line. Still gunning it, Ada threw a huge left-handed 360 into a tight technical landing before throwing a big backflip off and natural hit lower down. Ada's maiden victory in front of a home crowd marked him as one to watch in 2014. Yeah, I'm mega stoked that I'm here in Kermio, Italian. I'm mega stoked to be here in Kermio, in Italy, because the only Italian I'm really happy. As I finished my run, I had no idea that I'd finish first, but they told me I was leading at the finish line. I feel really happy. Erste Platz, das war schon ziemlich. Also, ich war, bin ja schon ziemlich glücklich. Well, the riders then made the short hop across the Mont Blanc Massif to the neighbouring resort of Chamonix in France. A historic centre for winter sports and mountaineering, Chamonix is a must-do on most free riders' bucket lists. 
The contest space was set for Le Guil Prix, a well-known free ride spot known locally as Little Alaska. After a short break, the snowboard women were back and raring to go. Margot Rosie was at home on this space, enjoying the playful terrain on the contest space and taking another second place, which would send her to the top of the rankings overall. However, it was veteran North Face Masters competitor Laura Dewey who pulled out all the stops to take first place. The American riding confidently and linking a series of drops, despite having to ride on borrowed equipment after her luggage was lost. American Ralph Backstrom continued his momentum after a season opening win in Revelstoke, riding an original line at speed here in Chamonix to take second place and boasting him to the top of the overall rankings. But it was local hero and 2012 world champion Jonathan Charlie who'd laid down the winning line. Hungry for a win, Charlie was on a mission, slaying one big powder hit after another. His fast, fluid line impressed the judges and his win would bring him back into the title race. Austrian Nadine Wallner came to Chamonix with a second place at Revelstoke already under her belt. Sticking to the more tracked section of the venue, Wallner put in a series of good airs before finishing up her run with a well-executed cliff drop to take second, hot on the heels of Christine Hagen. Reigning world champion Christine Hagen of Sweden seemed in a league of her own once again. Putting in another impressive run here in Chamonix as she took a confident fluid line, linking a series of big features at speed to take first place and secure her top spot in the rankings. It's just two contests out of five, so a lot can happen till, until the end, but of course it's a good start and it's a good thing for me. Hopes were high for Italian skier Marcus Ada. Going down the skier's right side of the course, Ada launched a big left side 360 only to go over the bars, losing his ski and any possible points. Austria's Fabio Studer took things to a new level, spinning at a styly right side cork 360. Studer then threw a huge left-handed 720 spin and into second place. We expect to see big things from him in 2014. An informed Drew Tabka opted for the skier's left side of the course, finding fresh tracks and hitting a big corner drop. Staying fluid, Tabka then picked off a big spine transfer, nailing the landing. With speed and style, Tabka makes it two wins out of three. I won today, and it's uh, it's incredible. I got a victory in Revelstoke and a victory here, so my best year ever so far, and we still got three stops left to go. And we'll have more free rider action after the break. And still to come, shooting action from Peru, after which we catch up with a group of youngsters hoping to make it big in alpine skiing. See you in a couple of minutes.